In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Today, the first Sunday in Lent, is known in the Orthodox Church as the Sunday of Orthodoxy. Because back in the 7th and 8th centuries, there was a movement by one of the emperors to destroy all the icons <coughs> that decorated the church thinking that we were worshipping idols. The period was called iconoclasm. And in the year 787, there was a council, ecumenical council, that restored icons to the church. And it was on this day. So that's why today we celebrate the restoration of icons. But on, not only do we celebrate the restoration of icons, it is the triumph of orthodox dogma, true dogma, over heretics and their heresies. Some of you may know, some of you may not know, that the church was plagued with heresies from the beginning of the Christian church. St. Paul, in his letters, he talks, he refers to those who spread false teachings. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about some of these heresies that existed in the church from the first century. One of them is adoptionism, and these were people who said that Jesus was born a mere man but was adopted later as a son of God by descent of the Holy Spirit at baptism. Another very dangerous heresy was Arianism, propagated by a priest in Egypt by the name of Arius, and it denied the true divinity of Christ. It said that Jesus was not co-eternal with his father, that there was a time when Jesus was not. And there was another one called docetism, which meant or taught that Jesus' physical body was an illusion, that Jesus seemed to appear in the flesh. And St. Paul writes against that in Colossians. And the same uh, the, the epistle of, uh, of St. John also, the first and the second, they refer to docetism also, against it. Then there was Macedonians who de denied the divinity of the Holy Spirit and saw it as a creation of the Son. Then monophysitism. And the Monophysites, or Jacobites also, they are known after Bishop Jacobi, who said that Christ's divinity dominates and overwhelms his humanity, while the Church teaches that Jesus is both human and divine. Then there was Nestorianism, and Nestorius was a patriarch in Jerusalem, <coughs> And he said that Jesus was not the divine Son of God. And therefore Mary, or the Virgin Mary, was not to be called the Mother of God, but the Mother of Christ, Christotokos. Then there was the Manichaeans. It was a dualistic religion that said that good and evil were equally powerful and that all material is evil. Then we have Marcionism, after Marcion, another dualistic belief system that, be, that taught that the God of the Old Testament could not have been the same as the God of the New Testament, meaning the God before Jesus came was different than the God after Jesus came. And now we have modern heresies Jehovah Witnesses of the day, they believe in one, in a one-person God, no trinity, 
and that Jesus was created by God. There's Mormonism or the Church of the Latter-day Saints who have the prophets and who believe that God had a wife. And then finally, a modern teachings by the Jesus Seminar that questions and refutes the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So you can see that throughout all these years there have been heresies that taught against the true faith. Now, the, the, the symbol of faith, the creed that we are going to recite in a few minutes, was put together in the year 325 against some of these heresies that existed and specifically against the Arian heresy that said that Jesus was not co-eternal with his father. And alongside this creed, there was a canon that was written that said it is unlawful for any man to bring forward or to write or to compose a different or contradictory faith as a rival to that established by the Holy Fathers assembled with the Holy Spirit in Nicaea. So we can deduct from this that there is a true faith. In these days we have become sort of a little bit uh, simple about the true faith. We want to be a homogeneous society, we want to merge or to be accepted by everyone. We want to accept everybody else, which is also good. But in this process, we tend to dilute our faith. And we don't take some of these heresies very seriously, although the people of all took them very seriously. If I tell you they used to have fights about the heresies, you would think they were kind of trivial. But they took them seriously. They didn't talk about politics in the market or about the weather or about other things. You could go to the market and they would be discussing, does Jesus have two natures or one nature? Does Jesus have one will or two wills? Did Jesus really appear in the flesh or he seemed to appear? And then there was the great schism between the Western Church and the Eastern Church over the addition of one word to the symbol of faith. And I was talking to somebody a few weeks ago and he took it very lightly. It's like we have the same faith but that just one little difference could divide the churches from each other. That's because they took the faith seriously and then there was truth to the faith. <clears throat> in, in his letter to Timothy, first, sec, first letter, St. Paul says, so that you may command certain people not to teach false doctrines any longer or devote themselves to myth and endless genealogies. In 2 Timothy, he tells him, guard the deposit, that was entrusted to you, guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit. And in the letter of Saint, second letter of Peter, he says, therefore I will always remind you of these things, even though you already know, know them and are established in the truth that you have. So our faith is the truth and is the true faith. And anything or anybody that tries to change this faith has been condemned or excommunicated by the church from day one. But why is the faith so important? Why is the true faith so important? Why are we Christians? Why do we come to this church? Because 
we are Christians because we seek salvation. Salvation is what Jesus came to do in this world. If it wasn't for this, then we would be just, you know, just coming to church, listening and doing nice things. But salvation is very, very important. And faith is the foundation of salvation. So what is salvation? Salvation is deliverance from sin and its consequences by faith in Jesus Christ, which includes death and separation from God. A relationship with God while on earth and eternal life with God in heaven. In simple words, we seek to be united with Christ on this earth and to be united with Christ in the life after. And this is why we come to church, to partake of the body and body, blood of Christ so that we can be united in Christ, in his body and blood, and in prayer to be united with Christ and to have a relationship with him when we pray to him. St. Paul says, we are justified by faith in Christ. We are made right with God through faith. We are to guard our faith. And we are to be prepared to fight, to maintain our faith during the storms of life. Very often, when we have difficulties in life, we tend to forget about God. Where is God in these difficult times for me? Some people lose their faith when a trauma or a tragedy happens in their life. And they go about living their life in a vacuum. So today, let us celebrate the triumph of faith, of the true faith over all these heresies that have existed and continue to exist even during these times. And as we will say at the end of this service, after the procession, this is the apostolic faith that we received from the apostles themselves. This is the faith of the fathers. We have a cloud of witnesses, men and women who lost their lives as martyrs and confessors for this true faith that we should not take lightly. This is the faith of the Orthodox. This is the faith that established the world. Glory be to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.